seven days without a home game, the Southeastern Louisiana men's basketball team finally returns to the University Center as they bring in the new year against the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. Happy New Year to you all, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the University Center on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana. I'm Chris Saleem. Today the Lions play the first Southland game, home game as head coach David Kiefer and the Lions come in at 3-9 overall, 0-1 in the Southland. Look to remove Sunday's game at Oklahoma State completely from their minds as uh, they were beaten 82-31. The score says uh, everything. Uh, don't really need to dive back into that one too much. Uh, Lions shot 13 for 58. One of those games and you put it behind you and uh, learn from it. But uh, I actually kind of like uh, what the uh, – Coach Kiefer said, uh, he put it after the game Sunday, we're going to burn that tape and forget it ever happened. So I guess I'm going to do the exact same thing as we shift our attention to the Jacks of Stephen F. Austin, who entered the day at 11-2 overall and 2-0 in the Southland, riding a four-game winning streak with conference wins at home over Houston Baptist and McNeese on the road. The Jacks, though, pulled off arguably the biggest upset in the history of Southland Conference basketball back on November 26th when they stunned the top-ranked Duke Blue Devils and Coach Mike Krasetsky 85-83 in overtime. And, uh, you know, I guess you see why everybody calls him Coach K. But uh, the Lions and Jacks have had a pretty entertaining rivalry over the past few seasons with Southeastern beating the uh, Jacks 73-62 back on December 28, 2017, right here on this very floor. Uh, the Jacks, however, have won the last two meetings, including a 59-55 win over the Lions March 10, 2018 in the Southern Conference Tournament Championship game in Katy, Texas. Uh, the Jacks also edged the Lions exactly one year ago today in Nacogdoches with a 65-60 victory. That brings us to today, though, and while the two teams uh, have had totally different results thus far this year, uh, I still think you're going to see a very competitive ball game against two teams that are going to make a lot of noise in the Southland Conference. Right now, Stephen F. Austin probably looking like one of the favorites, but uh, this uh, today's game features two of the top three scorers in the Southland Conference, including Southeastern sophomore Ty Brewer. He enters the day averaging 17.3 points per game and is also second in rebounding at 8.8. .8. Uh, the Lumberjacks are led by senior and first-team preseason All-Southland selection Kay uh, Kayvon Harris, averaging 17.2, which is third in the conference. So obviously, both guys will play a pretty big part in the outcome of this one. Harris also uh, the hero in the Duke win as he led the Jacks uh, with 26 points at Cameron Indoor. And again, <laughs> Lisa... To my knowledge, the biggest upset by any team in the Southland Conference since uh, its existence. But it uh, should be a very good one today. Uh, coach Kyle Keller, fourth-year head coach uh, under the four, uh, excuse me, four Stephen F. Austin, and the rookie head coach for the Southeastern Lions, David Kiefer, who we'll hear from here in just a moment. That's the tale of today for today. We'll take a break. We'll come back, and we'll hear from Southeastern men's head basketball coach David Kiefer when we return. This is Southeastern men's basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. Support for this broadcast on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network is provided in part by oh, North okay. Oaks Health System. Hi. North hey, Oaks Roger. Health System is proud to serve as the official provider of health care for
Coach, it's a brand new year, man. Uh, you know, get a chance uh, here today after 27 days without a home game. Just talk briefly about how nice it is to be back here at the University Center. Yeah, it's always nice to get back to, to Hammond playing a, a gym we're familiar with. Um, told the guys we were undefeated this year, so it's a good way to um, – feel right now and you know we're just throw throw away the last tape that that game's over with that, that that's not the team that we've been this year and um we, we're, we're we've had some really good practices like we have all year our guys are enthusiastic they're ready to to get after it today and um Stephen f austin has has been the cream of the crop in the in the league for a really long time so um nothing better than to see where you're at early in conference play you know not to beat a dead horse because i know we, you and i've talked about this and almost every pregame that we've had this year, but the progress of this team has been terrific with what you talked about all preseason of the process that you were looking for with this team. I mean, record aside, I think it's safe to say that this team has made the the progress outside of, you know, the a couple wins and losses that uh, you can feel pretty positive about going into the meat of the conference schedule. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, um, no, you know, at some point, you know, we, we just got to keep battling, keep battling. We talk about wins are going to come, but, you know, we are, you know, we, we expect to win this year. This isn't about the future, and, and we talk about that, and, and um, we're trying to win right now. And we know we're young, but we feel like we have the talent. Um, we're not far off, um, so we just keep battling. And, and today is going to be, again, a great test to, to see where we're at and um, how far off we are or, or if, if we're there. Um, I think the guys have been – competing um, every single day. You know, you can't make guys 230, 240 pounds. You know, we're, we're playing with posts sometimes, Pop and Ty are starting forwards um, at 200 pounds, and they're battling, and we get on them really hard, but, you know, they, they, they are light, so we got to use our advantage of, of our speed, and we got to beat them down the floor, and we got to pressure, and um, we just got to have a, a re relentless effort. Let's, you know, switch the attention to Stephen F. Austin directly. I mean, you Talking about a team that's 11 and two, four, uh, two and zero in the conference, and uh, obviously picked up national attention with one of the probably the biggest win in Southland Conference men's basketball history, winning at Duke uh, back on November the 26th. Uh, did you get a chance to take a look at that tape at all and see what it was about them that was so that makes them that impressive? Uh, yeah, you know, Coach K and Duke have tremendous talent, and they've gotten multiple first round picks. But at the same time, just like us. He has freshmen, mm -hmm. so you watch them defensively have lapses, and you watch Stephen F. Austin just play with an edge and a toughness, and know where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there, and know how to do their job. They got nothing but juniors and seniors, um, guys that understand what it takes every single play. And Duke, even though they have NBA guys, they they don't know they they've been allowed to get away with so much in high school, and even throughout this year, just being more talented. And then when you play a team that's that's tough and in the right spots all game, it, it threw them off a little bit. And, you know, Stuke had a big lead, 17 points, and Stephen F. Austin just never quit and uh, put their feet in the ground and, and just fought harder. Um, and, they, and that's kind of their M.O. They, they, they're not the most skilled basketball team, but they play about nine guys with full beards, and they're 23, 24 years old. They're all 215, 240 pounds, and they shoot it, and they chase the ball. And then defensively, they just get in passing lanes and guard and pressure the ball, and just everything becomes a just try to rough you off type game. Last question, Coach. Biggest point of emphasis today uh, for you guys in order to find a way to win, obviously other than outscoring them, but uh, we win this game if we play as hard as we can. We are just as tough as them and just as passionate as them. We play with great emotion but not be emotional. Um, I think if we have great poise, and um, play with great effort and intensity. We'll be right there to the end. Absolutely. Coach, I appreciate it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Southeastern Men's Head Basketball Coach David Kiefer. Welcome back live, ladies and gentlemen. As you just heard, that was Southeastern Head Coach David Kiefer. And uh, the, all, all the reason in the world for he and his guys to be confident coming into today. I mean, you look at the record, yeah, three and nine. You know, uh, obviously, that's not what he or uh, anybody on this team had in mind, but they played a lot better than that record. Have had a chance to win a lot of these non-conference, quote-unquote, money games. And I think we're about to see uh, the best of the 2019-20 uh, Lions here as they get into the meat of the conference schedule. And another thing, there's no more, you know, week and ten day, uh, week long, 10-day layoffs, et cetera. I don't think that's a good thing when it comes to a young team uh, like this. Uh, they want to be on the floor as much as possible. And I feel like that could possibly 
uh, have disrupted uh, this team a little bit during the non-conference schedule. So uh, from here on out with them basically playing every two and three days, I, I expect this team to put their best foot forward and have a terrific Southland Conference season. But uh, let's take a look at the Southland standings. It's Stephen F. Austin leading the way with an 11-2 record overall, 2-0 in the conference. Sam Houston also at 2-0, 9-4 overall. Abilene Christian 7-6 overall, 2-0. Uh, Central Arkansas 3-10 overall, but they are 2-0 in the Southland. Uh, Lamar and Nichols both at 7-6, and 1-1 one and one in the conference. Northwestern State at 4-7 and 1-1. Uh, and one uh, McNeese five and seven, zero oh and one in the conference. Southeastern, of course, three and nine, zero oh and one. Uh, University of Incarnate Word three and nine overall, zero oh and one in the Southland. Houston Baptist zero oh and ten, uh, and zero oh and one in Southland play. Both uh, UNO and a m Corpus Christi zero oh and two in the conference. Uh, UNO overall four and eight, a uh, m Corpus Christi four and nine. a m Corpus Christi, the Lions opponent Saturday at three thirty on the road. Southeastern will head out. First thing tomorrow morning, they'll fly over to Houston, then into Corpus Christi tomorrow afternoon and get ready for the Thursday, uh, the Saturday afternoon game. Rest of the schedule today, Sam Houston State at McNeese at 6.30 tonight, uh, UIW at Nichols at 7, Central Arkansas at Houston Baptist, Northwestern State at A&M, Corpus Christi, and Lamar at UNO, all those games at 7. As we're about two minutes to, uh, about two minutes or so away from the opening Tip off, and that'll give us a chance uh, to mention the clear bag policy to increase public safety. Southeastern Athletics has instituted the clear bag policy for all ticketed athletic events. The policy mirrors the safety precautions taken upon entrance to professional and collegiate sporting venues throughout the country. More information about the new line and clear policy is available at lionsports.net slash clear. The Lions Game Day Experience app. Enjoy digital access to Southeastern player bio, schedules, live scoring updates, social media feeds, and much more. The new mobile app, which provides for custom notifications and support for audio and video broadcast, is available for download in the App Store and Google Play. A download link is also available at lionsports.net slash app. Did you get all that, Lion fans? I'm sure you took notes and wrote that down word for word. Um, inside Southeastern basketball fans premieres this Monday at Rainbow Daiquiri's. That's January the 6th, uh, Rainbow Daiquiri's at 14384. West Thomas Street, talk college hoops with Coach Keeper and host Alan Waddell as they'll cover the finer points of each game and preview the upcoming games. If you can't join the crowd, you can submit a question at lionsports.net for the quote, ask the coach segment. Inside Southeastern Basketball with David Kiefer premieres this coming Monday, January the 6th, and uh, we'll go through March the 10th. So uh, it'll be a uh, always enjoyable uh, to go over uh, Rainbow Daiquiris for that 10-week uh, show and talk a little bit of Lion Hoops. But uh, going to be a good one this afternoon, Lion fans. Uh, not a typical Start time, obviously, you know, usually uh, midweek games or weekday games at night, but uh, both teams agreeing to the early start, especially with the South, with the Lions schedule, having uh, the head out to Corpus Christi tomorrow. It made all the sense in the world for Southeastern to schedule this game a little bit early. But anyway, it's National Anthem time. We'll have the starting lineups, the opening tip-off from the University Center when we return. This is Southeastern men's basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network.
It's time to meet the starting lineups for tonight's match. Make that today's game as the Lions and Stephen F. Boston here at the University Center. I want to thank all of you for uh, joining us who are watching us live on our YouTube station, the Southeastern Sports Network, and for those of you listening on 90.9 KSLU. Starting lineups for tonight brought to you by Roof Crafters. Roof Crafters specializes in commercial and residential roof replacements, storm restorations, repairs, skylights, and more. Find out more online at theroofcrafters.com. And we'll meet the lineup for the visiting Stephen F. Austin Jacks under fourth-year head coach Kyle Keller as they come in with an 11-2 record and 2-0 in the Southland. At guard, a 6'6 senior from Illinois, Georgia, number one, Tevon Harris. At guard, a 6'3 junior from Morton, Mississippi, number two, Rody Ware. At guard, a 5'11 senior from Beaumont, Texas, number 10, John Camo. At forward, a 6'9 junior from Jacksonville, Florida, number 12, Charlie Daniels. And at forward, a six foot six senior from Freeport, Bahamas, number 23, Nathan Bain. Assistant coaches for the Jacks, Jeremy Cox, Wade Mason, and Mitch Vanya. For the Lions, as they come in, 3 9 overall and 1 in the Southland. And again, just forget the record on this team. If you think that the, this team is, uh, if their record has anything uh, to show how good they are going to be uh, I, I beg to differ anyway at guard a five foot eleven sophomore from benton harbor michigan number zero laquan butler at guard a six foot freshman from palatka florida number five byron smith at guard a six foot one senior from reserve louisiana number 10 vaughn julian at guard a, a four excuse me a six nine junior from zazenshaw senegal number 13 pop job and at ford six foot seven sophomore from meridian mississippi Ty Brewer, head coach, of course, first year head coach David Kiefer, assistant coaches Mark Lieberman, Patrick Schulte, and Jordan Brooks. So the stage is set, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I want to thank you for joining us here on the Southeastern Sports Network, our YouTube station, and here on 90.9 KSLU FM. I'm Chris Salim, and uh, this is a game that people are going to look to uh, when the Southland Conference season is over, and uh, the two teams that I think will have a lot to say and be right in the thick of things. Uh, I know uh, a lot of people are talking about this uh, Lions team and how young they are, and there's no question they are. Uh, they've got uh, a combined 10 freshmen and sophomores, but we've seen how talented they are and uh, what they're capable of, and I think it's just a matter of time before they take off and the wins start to uh, – they start to produce wins and uh, find a way. So, for those of you uh, listening on the radio, the Jacks in their road black – with the white trim numbers. Southeastern in their home gray with the white letters on the front and the yellow numbers on the back. It'll be Ty Brewer against Charlie Daniels to tip this one off. Southeastern will move left to right. Process of elimination, the Jacks will go right to left. Brewer against Daniels, the tip is up and it is controlled by the Jacks and we are underway here at the University Center as Camo brings it into the front court. Lions will start off in the man and pretty much stay in the man for the better part of the game. This one comes near side to Ware. Ware back uh, to the near side wing to Bain. Bain back up top to uh, Ware. Ware guarded closely by Julian. Ware to the top of the key comes back near side to Bain. Drops this one down low. Good defense by Pop Jop. Little drop step, turn around layup, put up no good, but a foul going to be called against Pop Jop. And that'll send Charlie Daniels to the free throw line. Nice drop step by the junior from Jacksonville. Good possession defensively, though, by the Lions. But uh, nice one-on-one uh, -on -one move by Daniels as the first free throw coming is up. And it is off the front iron. No good. Daniels on the season, 50%. Well, Make that now 49, 10 out of 21 from the charity stripe. Second free throw up. This one in and out. No good. Rebound is going to be a loose ball foul against Stephen F. Austin as it was Ty Brewer that cleared it. Let's see who they got it. Foul goes against number 23, Nathan Bain, and the Lions will get it. And Stephen F. Austin will play in a man as Julian will bring it into the front court. No score, 30 seconds into the game. Julian to the top of the key. He'll come 
Back to the near side and gives it to Butler. Butler working near side wing with 15 on the shot clock. Butler drives baseline. He'll put this one up off the glass. No good. Rebound tipped, and it is controlled by Stephen F. Austin as they race it into the front court with Camo. Camo straight to the lane. Layup. No good. Rebound cleared by Southeastern, and here comes Smith. Smith into the front court quickly. Good pace to this one. Near side jumper Brewer. This one is as good. Pretty shot by Brewer. Nice find by Smith. Southeastern. With the first bucket of the ball game, exactly one minute into the game as Camo races it into the front court. Come pass near side to Bain. He'll give it to the wing on the near side over to Harris. Harris drives hard into the lane. Looked like he got away with an offensive foul. He did, and he gets the shot to go. Good defense by Butler, but Harris gets the shot to go. Game tied at two. Julian working near side wing. He'll dribble it back up top. Lions looking to set something up. Still trying to get into the set that they want. Julian dribbles near side. Little floater off the glass. It's off the front, off the uh, iron. No good. Rebound is cleared by Stephen F. Austin as they'll bring it into the front court to Camo. Camo guarded by Julian. Nice heads by Pop Jop. Pass comes near side to Bain. They'll skip it to the far side corner to Harris. Harris drops it down low to Daniels. Daniels, shot put up off the glass, no good. Rebound fought for. It's Daniels, gets his own rebound, and he'll dribble back out with it. Two minutes gone by here in the first half. Game tied at two. Harris from way downtown. Now that's off the front iron. Rebound cleared by Southeast, and Smith races it into the front court. Far side, Butler fires the three from the corner. Good! Beautifully done by Butler. Drills the three, Southeastern with a 5-2 lead. Camo at the top of the key, throws this one down low. This one knocked out of bounds. Well, a foul going to be called against Southeastern. A good help side by Butler, but I think they're going to get him for the foul. Actually, they're going to say Julian with the reach in. Southeastern with a 5-2 lead here. A little over two minutes gone by here in the first half. Southland Conference home opener for the Lions here against what many are probably saying the Southland Conference uh, favorites, especially the way the season has started for the Jacks. First free throw up. First free throw is good this time for Daniels as Brandon Gonzalez will check in for the Lions for Vaughn Julian. Julian quick picking up two quick fouls, so that could be, uh, that could uh, definitely make things interesting for the Lions. Gonzalez, six foot six, 200 pound junior from Punta Gorda, Florida. Second free throw, that's off the front iron, no good. Rebound is taken by Gonzalez, and here comes Butler. Butler into the front court to Smith. Smith to the near side corner, gets it into the baseline. Far side to Gonzalez for three, that's off the iron, no good. Rebound tip, knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Southeastern. Good second effort by Pop Jop. Great look, though by Butler to get it into the corner, or excuse me, by Smith to get it into the corner to Gonzalez, but uh, unable to convert, but the Lions have a new shot clock. Pass goes far side to Brewer on the wing, looking down low for Jop, then skips it back near side to Gonzalez. Gonzalez to the top of the key over to Butler. Butler far side wing, dribbles it back up top, crossover dribble, shot clock winding down. Butler kicks it near side. Gonzalez will fire the three from the near corner and drills it. Boy, good find again by the Lions. This time it's Butler and the Lions with the early 8-3 lead. 17.05 left in the first half. Daniels top of the key. Pass near side to Harris. Harris drives into the lane. Shot put up. This one is no good. Tipped up, no good. Tipped up, and it is cleared by the Lions and Brewer. Good start by Southeastern as they bring it into the front court with Smith. Smith kills his dribble, skips it far side to Butler. He'll fire the three. That's no good. Rebound fought for. Loose ball goes to Gonzalez. Layup, no good, but he's fouled. Boy, how about the start to this one by Southeastern? They are flying all over the floor here through the first three minutes and change of the ball game. Eight to three, our score as Gonzalez will go to the free throw line. Boy, what a difference a few days makes. Uh, Sunday, a day to forget. Thursday, so far, <laughs> looking pretty good. First free throw is good for Gonzalez, the Lions junior from Florida. Gonzalez now nine out of 10 from the free throw line on the year. Gonzalez, second free throw, that's nothing but net. And the Lions will play a little full court man as they lead now 10 to three. Quickly into the front court, this is number four, David Cacleries, and he gets the layup to go. Pretty move by Cacleries. Six foot, 185 pound junior from Emus, Pennsylvania. 10 to five Lions, 16, 28 left in the first half. Terrific start for Southeastern here on a matinee 
this Thursday afternoon. Butler at the top of the key out near half court. Dribbles hard to the right side. Gets a little space, puts this one up. Layup, no good. And a blocking foul called, and he'll go to the free throw line. This one will go against uh, Cackleries. And that'll put Butler at the line. Butler also terrific at the line. Nine out of ten from the free throw line. Doesn't look like Coach Kyle Keller really liked the blocking foul. First free throw up, nothing but net for the sophomore, Butler. Hey, Butler been terrific since he was inserted into the starting lineup four games ago. Second free throw, that's nothing but net. Lines with the 12-5 lead as we approach the first media timeout of the ball game. Pass comes in, bounds to number two, that's Rody Ware. Ware will bring it into the front court to the far side wing. Back up top to number 13, that's Calvin Solomon. He just checked in, 6'7", freshman from Houston, Texas. Pass goes far side to Ware. Dribbles baseline, jumper good. Pretty move by Ware. And it's 12-7 Southeastern as Butler walks it into the front court. Lions being... Very patient on the, oh, nice move by Butler. Gets it down low to Jop for the dunk. Well, no look pass to Pop Jop and the easy finish. Beautiful look by Butler. Top of the key is Calcaris. He'll skip it back near side to Harris. Harris guarded closely by Butler. 15-35 uh, left first half, 14-7 lines. This one knocked away by Jop and stolen by Butler. What a play by Pop Jop. Here come the lines. Butler, front court to Smith. Smith drives baseline. He's cut off. Top of the key. Jop fires the three. It looks good. It's in and out. No good. Rebound is cleared by the Jackson Rody Ware. Ware into the front court behind his back dribble. Comes back near side to Solomon. Solomon with the triple threat. Looking around, trying to go somewhere with it, but Ty Brewer all over him. Pass near side to Calcari, guarded by Smith. Back up top, this one goes to Ware. To the far side, elbow, he'll dribble and takes the shot from about 10 feet and knocks it down. Back to back jumpers for Ware. It's 14 to nine, Southeastern, as we will go to the media timeout at the next dead ball. And I think that's exactly, I think uh, Butler actually calling timeout. So a timeout was called. I think Butler may have gotten uh, hurt or taken one in the chest, but that's going to send us to the first media timeout. Terrific start for Southeastern. They lead 14-9, 14-49 left in the first half. We're back in a moment. This is Southeastern men's basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. Welcome back to the University Center. Southeastern with an early advantage, 14 to nine, with 14-49 left in the first half. Couple substitutions during the timeout. Freshman Nick Caldwell. Caldwell, the 6'7 freshman from Gosman, Louisiana, and Max Starwood, number four, the six foot nine junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Smith, top of the key for Southeastern, dribbles to the near side after he takes a screen from Starwood. Skips it far side to Gonzalez for three. That one is no good. Rebound cleared. This one into the hands of uh, Cameron Johnson, who just checked in a moment ago. 6'4", junior from Little Rock, Arkansas. Also into the game for Southeastern, freshman Isaiah Kirby. Kirby from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, passing the near side corner to Calcaries. He drills the three-pointer. So it's a one possession game, 14-12. Southeastern with the lead over Stephen F. Austin. Smith dribbles into the lane. He's cut off though, drops it down low to Starwood and it's tipped out of bounds off the foot of Starwood. And now the uh, Lumberjacks uh, bench starting to wake up a little bit. Uh, maybe realizing uh, 
They're going to be in for a battle today for 40 minutes. And that goes for both teams. Calcaris into the front court, gets it into the near side corner, wide open for three. Walker, that's off the iron, no good. Rebound, this one is fought for. We've got a loose ball, and the jump ball possession will give it back to Southeastern. As number 11, Otis Walker couldn't knock down the three-pointer. Otis Walker, six foot two, sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Juan Butler will check right back in as uh, it'll be Byron Smith taking a break. So on the floor, it's Caldwell, Butler, Starwood, and Gonzalez. And Isaiah Kirby. So Butler into the front court, guarded by Calcaris. He'll jump to the near side wing. Butler. Trying to find somewhere to go with it. Gets it into the near side corner. The Gonzalez had it poked away and stolen. Here come the Jacks. Good transition defense, though, by the Lions as they stop the basketball as Walker brings it into the front court. Gives it top of the key to Bain. Back to Walker, far side wing, guarded by Kirby. He dribbles baseline, cut off nicely. Nowhere to go with it. Kicks it into the corner with Calcaries. Top of the key to uh, uh, Jefferson or Johnson. That one knocked away and stolen as it goes out of bounds to Southeastern. Good defense by the Lions. So Cameron Johnson with the shot fake went to the basket. Good help side by Caldwell and Starwood. And Lions get it back as uh, Ty Brewer checks right back in. 14-12 hour score. 13-25 to go here in the first half. A terrific pace to this game, too. Both teams playing pretty well, actually. Butler into the front court, takes the screen from Starwood, working near side wing. Butler skips it far side over to Kirby. Kirby drives into the lane, had it knocked away, and he's able to get it back, though. Can't find anywhere to go with it. Kirby finds the Caldwell open near side for three. No good. Rebound cleared by the Jackson. They'll go on the other way. Calcaries will take it the other way, lays it up and in. Pretty move. And we're tied at 14. So, Southeastern and Stephen F. Austin tied at 14. And... I can tell you, just like I said in the pregame, you throw the records out. What uh, both these teams did in the non-conference, I have no doubt this is going to be a 40-minute battle. Butler into the corner, wide open for three. That's Kirby, drills it. And the Lions regain the lead as it looks like we're in for a seesaw fair. That one knocked off the foot of Calcaries, but able to get it back. 17-14, Lions with the lead. Pass far side over to Otis Walker. Walker will take a couple of dribbles as he's uh, guarded closely by Butler as we wind down on 12 minutes to go here in the first half. This one knocked away and stolen by Kirby. Lions have numbers. Kirby lobs it back door to Brewer. Beautifully done by Kirby as Brewer finishes it. And the Lions take the five-point lead to look out below. Calcaries working near side wing, guarded closely by Butler. Lions by five. Top of the key, this one goes over to Johnson. Johnson guarded closely by Kirby. They're looking down low. They'll skip it near side to Calcaries. Left open for three, and that's good again. Son of a gun, this young man can shoot the basketball. 19-17, Lions still with the lead. Kirby back the other way as the pace of this game continues to be like a track meet. Personally, I enjoy those. Butler working far side. He'll fire the three, and this one is no good. Rebound tipped and fought for, and this one will go to the Jacks as they reach in foul called against Max Starwood. That'll take us to the end of 12 media timeout. We've got a good one going here at the University Center. Fans, Southeastern 19, Stephen F. Austin 17. Back in a moment, this is Southeastern basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. to 17 for those of you listening on 90.9 fm kslu and those of you watching us on the 
Southeastern Sports Network YouTube station. You are in. You've tuned in for a good one as uh, you're seeing two very good basketball teams playing at a pretty high level here early in this ball game. I personally would like to see that for 40 minutes as long, of course, as the Lions uh, end up on the right end of the scoreboard as they have fought hard the first 12 games of the season. And uh, I think it's uh, – about time uh, this team take off because they are certainly capable of it. But it will be the Lumberjacks basketball coming out of the timeout with 11.27 left here in the first half. Pressure by Kirby in the backcourt as this one goes to Camo and he races it into the front court. He'll dribble near side as he takes the screen from Harris. Harris still with just two points as he drives hard. Knocked away! Offensive foul though called. Pop job stepped right in front of Harris and he gets the charge and Pop Job gets at least one of those a game. I remember a uh, first-team all-conference four for Southeastern just last year that used to do that pretty regularly. May, uh, some of you may remember Mr. Moses Greenwood. As the Lions have it, and Butler will race it into the front court to the near side wing, gets it into the corner to Smith. Byron Smith working. Far side corner trying to get it down low. Can't find anywhere to go with it, though. Still can't find anywhere. Smith, and he has to do, whoa, this one knocked away, and then he does throw it away. So it's a turnover. Back the other way, Harris. Harris gets it down low. Shot put up and good on the turnover as Cameron Johnson ties the game at 19. Good defense by the Lumberjacks. Game deadlocked at 19. Not quite halfway through the first half. Butler back the other way. Both teams, though, just playing pretty solid on both ends. <laughs> just this one to Caldwell, elbow jumper. That one rims in and out, no good. Offensive rebound, Jop. He can't get it to go. Shot goes back, or the uh, ball goes back out to Smith, and the Lions will reset with the game tied at 19 here in the first half. 10:20 to go until halftime. Butler skips it far side, but that one knocked away and stolen by the Jacks. They have numbers. Johnson layup put up and good. Pretty move by Cameron Johnson, and they take their first lead of the ball game. Beg your pardon. They, uh, yeah, his first lead of the game. Got the Lions scored the first back at bus, uh, basket. So, Butler over to uh, Brewer. Far side wing three. That one is no good. Rebound cleared. Jack starting to take a little bit of control here. Lions need a stop. Pass comes near side. Combo fakes the three. Travel. Let's go the other way. Ron Julian will check back in with 9.46 to go in the half, and he's got two fouls, so he's going to have to be extremely careful. But at least uh, thus far, a very good college basketball game. We're getting the witness here on a Thursday afternoon. Not typically a uh, time for a basketball game, but here we are nonetheless in a pretty good crowd. Julian, top of the key, far side wing. Looking, trying to find somewhere to go with it. Lions getting a little stagnant, though, or more so. I think you got to give Stephen F. Austin credit for denying the basketball. Julian Trapp gets it up top to Job. Job drives hard left side, gets it into the corner. Julian left open for three. It looked like it was partially blocked, and then it is knocked away and stolen by Stephen F. Austin as they bring it into the front court. Cal uh, Calcaris, he'll back it out and hand it off to Johnson, far side wing. Johnson looking down low, can't find anywhere to go. Goes back out to Calcaris, near side wing. This one to Ware. Ware to the top of the key, drives into the lane, kicks it back out to Calcaris, close out three. This one is an air ball. Offensive rebound, no put up, and no good. Rebound tipped, and we're going to get a foul called by the near side official against uh, Ty Brewer. That'll be his first, and that'll send the Jacks back to the free throw line as Kayvon Harris will go to the charity strike. Here is 54 out of 68 from the free throw line this year, 79%. First free throw is up and good. It's the largest lead so far for the Jacks, 22 to 19. Our score as Daniels will check out. Second free throw coming. I might see a little pressure if the free throw is made. And actually they will not, so it's a four-point lead as Julian will race it into the front court. Lions doing a good job of getting in their sets early. Julian to the far side, wing cut off nicely by Calcaris. Calcaris all over Julian. Lions just standing around right now. Got to get some ball movement. 
This one will be Julian. Julian skips it near side to Smith. Good extra pass. Caldwell, top of the key, fires the three. No good. Rebound cleared, though, by the Jacks and Calvin Sullivan. Sullivan gets into the front court to Calcaris. Calcaris at the near side or at the top of the key gives it to Ware. He'll drive baseline, shut off nicely by Caldwell. Ware to the near side, dribbles to the top of the key, far side to Calcaris. He'll give it off uh, to, to Cameron Johnson. This one tipped and knocked out of bounds. It will stay with Stephen F. Austin. 23-19. Jacks with the lead and the basketball. We approach the eight-minute media timeout. No Calcaris will inbound. This one comes into Harris. Harris at the top of the key. To the far side, it goes to Johnson. The jumpers put up no good. Rebound no cleared by Brewer. Brewer gets it up ahead to Julian. Lions need a bucket here. Got a little stagnant. This one goes into the corner. Caldwell left open for three. And this time, the freshman drills it. It's back to one. 23-22, Lumberjacks. Next dead ball to our under eight media timeout. Calcaris front court. 23-22, Stephen F. Austin leading Southeastern here in a good one at the University Center. Ware fakes the jumper from the baseline, gives it over to Solomon. Solomon drives in the lane, cut off by Pop Jop. This is Harris. Harris gets it down low. Solomon layup put up no good. Pretty good ball movement on the interior by the Jacks as we go to our under eight media timeout. 7.34 left first half. Jacks 23, Southeastern 22 here in a terrific Southland Conference basketball game. Back in a moment, Southeastern basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. Nine and two, two and zero oh in the Southland. That game at 6:30. You can catch the play-by-play -play with Kimla Chapel right here on 90.9 FM KSLU, beginning with the pregame show at 6:15. Uh, the Lady Lions defeated Houston Baptist for their first conference victory of the year, 69-59 on the road uh, to even their conference record, but uh, then fell in their final non-conference game of the year Sunday at Alabama. As we're back to action, first free throw is no good for Calvin Solomon. The 6'7 freshman from Houston, Texas. Second free throw. This one rolls around and it does go through as he gets one of two. 24-22. Into the front court goes to Caldwell. Caldwell down low to Pop Chop. Chop shot put up no good from about six feet. No good. Rebound cleared by the Jacks. A lot of contact down low, but nothing called. This one goes to Calcaries at the top of the key. He'll dribble to the near side. They're going to uh, take the screen from Harris. Harris gets it near his side. He's guarded by Brewer. This one right side. Nice job by Brewer to cut him off. They'll lob it down low to Solomon. Solomon back near side to Calcaris. He fires the three. That one's uh, blocked by Caldwell. Into the front court. This one goes to Smith. Smith outside to Julian for three. That one is no good. Good defense, though, by Caldwell. They got the good look, but uh, Julian unable to knock it down. Nice sequence there by the Lions, though, just unable to convert. Pass goes far side over to Walker. Walker back to where? He dribbles to the near side. He'll take the jumper from the elbow. That's good. Boy, I tell you what, 
uh, Rody Ware with a pretty jumper, uh, to say the least. That's at least the third one uh, he's knocked down like that today, and that's going to be a foul against the Jacks. On um, Julian draws it. That is the fifth team foul. <laughs> Didn't get it out there. So it'll be called. Well, will take it out. For Southeastern on the near sideline. For those of you just joining us, I'm Chris Saline from the beautiful University Center in Hammond, America. Southeastern and Stephen F. Austin, Southland Conference men's basketball. Butler, top of the key. Oh, nice patience by the Lions, trying to but need a little bit more ball movement. Butler dribbles to the near side, gives it over to Brewer. Brewer back to Butler, far side wing. They'll get it down low. Pretty move by Chop, but he can't get the layup to go. Now we've got a loose ball and a rebound cleared by Daniel. Pop missed the uh, gimme, unfortunately, uh, but rebound goes to the Lumberjacks. Now we're going to get a foul away from the ball. This is going to be against Stephen F. Foss. No, it's going to be against Pop Chop as he took one in the face. Chop whistled for the foul. Let's see what the discussion is. Uh, I think that actually takes us to the media timeout. That, no, we just came back from it, so I'm not sure what the... Let's see. All right. So I, well, it doesn't look like an official timeout. Okay, I see what they're doing now. They're checking the replay for to see if there was an elbow and maybe a flagrant against Stephen F. Austin. So, all the officials check on that. Let's go back to the updates the, uh, around the campus. How about the Southeastern track team? Third-year head coach Corey Mistretta and his guys and gals will compete in their first full squad indoor meet a week from Friday. That's uh, January the 10th when they participate in the LSU Purple Tiger Invitational Friday, January the 10th at 10 a.m. at Carl Maddox Fieldhouse in, you guessed it, Baton Rouge. So, also, the softball team, don't look now, fans, but we're, what, 35 days from opening day uh, when the Lady Lions host uh, Buffalo University February the 7th at 4 o'clock over at North Oak Park. The Lady Lions and head coach Rick Freeman are absolutely loaded, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, probably going to be one of the favorites to win the conference. I'm looking forward to see what the season holds for them. Uh, it, probably as balanced as any team in the league and really a team that is, I think could possibly be capable of an at-large bid. That's how talented uh, this team uh, is going to be top to bottom, not to put any pressure on, but uh, I, I, I think Rick Freeman uh, has built one heck of a program here and uh, looking forward to this spring. Then, of course, Coach Matt Riser and the baseball team, before you know it, they'll be, uh, let's see, a little, uh, about six weeks uh, roughly from today. They will open up against UL Lafayette, February the 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, that game at uh, Old Tigmore Field uh, on the campus of UL Lafayette at 6 o'clock. Uh, that's just the start of many uh, intriguing non-conference games for the baseball team. They'll take on Southern Miss, uh, South Alabama, Louisiana Tech, Tulane, among others. Excuse, uh, LSU and Mississippi State, by the way. So, uh, but you can view both uh, the softball and baseball schedules online at lionsports.net and uh, take a look at all uh, the entire schedule yourselves and uh, see if there's a uh, Lions home game that maybe uh, you can check out if it's a softball or baseball game and come check out uh, both teams. I think it's going to be a good year for both of them. So, it uh, looks like nothing uh, called on the flagrant as we're back to action here on the hardwood. It'll be the Jacks basketball. On the inbound under the basket, John Camo gets it into where he'll take the jumper from the near baseline and drills it again. Jesus, this guy can shoot. Uh, Six-point deficit, and that's the largest lead of the game for Stephen F. Fawson. Julian dribbles uh, to the top of the key. Lions need a bucket here. Julian knocked away, has it stolen, and here come the Jacks. Into the front court, it's Camo. Camo, far side wing over to Daniels. Knocked away from behind, though, by Starwood. What a play, and the Lions have it. Terrific play by Max Starwood. Front court, this one goes to Caldwell. Caldwell drops it off to uh, to Brewer. Turn around, jumper, kind of a wild shot. No good, can't get it to go, and the rebound is cleared 
by the Jacks into the front court. Pass goes far side corner over to uh, Walker for three. That's good. Nine point lead for Stephen F. Austin somehow. No reason to panic. Lions have been in a lot worse situation, so no reason to think they can't come back. Back door to Brewer. Brewer loses it, but Butler able to get it. Butler dribbles in the lane, then he'll back it out. Crossover dribble for Butler. Lions not with the same ball movement they had early in this one. 4.54 left first half. Butler, hesitation dribble, takes it right side, lay it put up. Good, count it. No, they're going to call a charge. He was in the restricted area. Mm, mm, mm. Tough break for the Lions. I think, uh, I'm not sure if that's a reviewable play, but uh, 31 22 nonetheless, as the charge is called, a blown call, and it'll go the other way. And this one's Camo. Camo over to Ware. Ware guarded closely by Butler. It's a nine point game. Lions, though, not going to give up as they're continuing to play as hard as they absolutely can. Three-pointer far side. This one is no good. Rebound. Tip back, and it goes to Camo. Camo at the elbow. Knocked away momentarily by Butler, but the Jacks get it right back. It'll go into the hands of Otis Walker. Walker to the top of the key. Comes back near side to Camo. They'll get it into the corner to Ware for three, and that's good. 12-point lead for the Jacks as they have heated up, and the Lions haven't been able to buy a basket over the last couple minutes. Four minutes and change to go. 12 point deficit. Byron Smith out near half court. And looks like Coach David Keeper going to call a timeout. I think that's going to take us to the under four media timeout. See if they do go with the media timeout or. To so they are okay. It is going to be a media timeout. We'll take one. Uh, 354 to go first half. The Jacks have uh, built a 12-point lead, 34-22. Back in a moment, this is Southeastern Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. First half, 11-0 run by the Jacks as they have drilled, uh, including three three-pointers. Lions uh, trying to stop the bleeding here inbounds for, uh, from Caldwell to Smith. So Lions needing the bucket here, but no reason to panic. Just a big, a nice run here by the Jacks. This one goes into the corner of the Kirby. Kirby drives baseline and skips it out to Caldwell. Caldwell fires the three. No, he stepped out of bounds. So, if there's, I mean, this is the time of the game, though, if you want to uh, have to withstand a run, and let's see how the Lions uh, handle it. A little adversity here through over the last couple minutes of the first half as Ware brings it into the front court. Ware, guarded by Smith, hands this one off to Johnson. Johnson to Walker. Walker to the far side wing, gives this one back to Harris. Harris, top of the key, hands it to Ware. And we'll call, oh, nice little uh, in-between dribble jumpers put up and good. And Roadie Ware is hotter than a 5,000-degree barbecue pit here in the first half. Three minutes and change to go in the half. 36 to 22 as this will knock away, but it goes into the hands of Caldwell. Then Caldwell throws it away, but then it goes into the hands of Brewer, who's fouled, and the Lions will get the basketball back. So... 
A 13 to nothing run by the Jacks here after the Lions really uh, jumped out to a pretty good start, but uh, all of a sudden the Jacks could close their eyes and not miss. I mean, everything the Lumberjacks have thrown up the last four minutes, no matter if it was a quality shot or not, has gone in. Thirty-six twenty-two, Southeastern trailing, two fifty-five to go in the half. Lions needing a couple of buckets here just to stop the bleeding. Smith dribbles to the near side. He'll go hard to the basket. The layup is put up and good, and that ends a thirteen-nothing run. Thirty-six twenty-four, our score. Nice move by Byron Smith into the front court. It's where, where, guarded closely by Smith as he takes the. Screen from Harris and drives into the basket. Offensive rebound by Harris. Goes up strong with it. He's fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. Foul's going to go against number two, Isaiah Kirby. Well, point late for the Lumberjacks with two and a half to go here in the first half. want to thank everybody who has tuned in. First free throw up, and that's good for Harris, the preseason first team all Southland, averaging 17.2 a game. Brandon Gonzalez checks back in, 37-24, our score. Not Harris, so that's been the man tonight. It has been Brody Ware. He's third, got with 13 points on six of seven. Free throw is second free throw is no good as Jop. Clears it, and he'll get it up ahead to Smith. Smith into the far side corner to Gonzalez, and it goes through his hands for another turnover. Well, the last four, about four or five minutes, the Lions have just uh, kind of, things have unraveled, and then for Stephen F. Austin, obviously uh, everything's going their way. Into the front court, it's Rody Ware. Ware guarded by Smith. Ware. Dribbles to the far side wing, cut off nicely to Harris. Harris drives into the basket, kicks it near side, travel. Lions will get it back with two minutes and eight seconds to go until halftime as the Jacks have a Baker's dozen lead of 13, 37-24. Don't forget, Lion fans, will be back in action Saturday afternoon at Corpus Christi. Texas A&M Corpus Christi at 3.30. Caldwell working near side, drives into the lane, gets this one down low to Jop on the block. Jop, and they're going to say he traveled and will go the other way. Ball movement not quite there for Southeastern here in the, about the last six or seven minutes of the half. 154 to go until halftime. Lions needing a couple buckets here to go into halftime, feeling pretty uh, good about uh, their chances as right now trailing by a lot. That Southeastern pressure's full court, and this may not be a bad idea. I think... Uh, I could put the Jacks in uh, some tough position. Pass goes over to Daniels. They'll skip it far side over to Otis Walker. Walker back to Harris. Harris working top of the key. Drives right side back to Walker. He'll fire the three from the wing. That's no good. Rebound. Knocked away. Offensive rebound stays with Stephen F. Austin. It's to the top of the key to Harris. Harris skips it back up top to where? Far side wing to Johnson. Fakes the jumper. Takes the jumper and then gets it to go. The little floater from six feet. It is a 15-point. Stephen F. Austin lead, 39-24, and the Jacks just a, a seasoned team. Smith, this one, shot put up, no good. Rebound cleared by Stephen F. Austin as it goes into the hands of Daniels. Daniels over to Walker. Walker working far side. He'll dribble it to the far side elbow, and this one is no good. Offensive rebound, no Harris. Goes back up strong with it. He's fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line with a minute to go here in the first half. As right now, Stephen F. Austin beating the lines in every phase of the game. One minute to go in the half. 39-24, our score. Free throw coming for Harris. This one is up. It's in and out. No good. So Ty Brewer will check back in as the Lions going to have a lot of work to do in the second half against a very poised, seasoned veteran, Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks basketball team. 
team that last year missed the Southland Conference Tournament, finishing 7-11. Second free throw, that one is good. In the conference, 14-16 overall, but appear to have returned to form this year as they started 11-2 overall. Behind the back, this is Smith. He'll take the elbow jumper. That's good. And the Lions turn it back to 14. 40 to 26 as we approach halftime. And this one will come to the front court with Calcaris. He'll dribble to the far side. Wang loses it, but uh, almost stolen. And Kirby able to come away with it. Gets it up ahead to Brewer. Brewer loses it out of bounds. And this one will go out of bounds to the Jacks. So, Southeastern will press full court. 33 seconds to go in the half. Inbounds pass comes to Nathan Bain. Or, excuse me, that's uh, Camo. Camo guarded by Kirby. 40 to 26. About a three second difference between shot clock and game clock. Uh, yeah, Jack's going to probably run it, or they are going to run this one down. Camo. Dribbles to the near side, gives it up to Harris. Harris dribbles into the lane, a little floater. This one is no good, tipped up, no good. Tipped up again, no good. Tipped around, no good. Rebound cleared. This one goes back out to Camo, and he's fouled. As with less than a second to go in the half, Camo will get free throws. Foul goes against Ty Brewer. That'll be his second. Boy, I, I, <laughs> every break the Lumberjacks can get to getting the ball bounces right back out to Camo and then able to get off the wild shot and get uh, a whistle called. First free throw, Camo up and this one is good. So the Lions going to go in the halftime trailing by more, probably 15, at least, uh, 15, maybe 16. And uh, after a, a, a great start, had a early uh, five-point lead, 14 to nine, and then uh, Lumberjack started to chip away. And now here they are with a 16-point lead as we're just a few ticks uh, less than a second from halftime. And the heave, and that'll do it for the first half. It was Stephen F. Austin with a 42-26 lead over the Lions here at the half. We'll take a two-minute break. We'll come back with first half box score and more. Uh, very well played first half, obviously, by the Lumberjacks. We'll take a break and come back. This is Southeastern Men's Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. Support for this broadcast on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network.
well the Lions as they jumped out to a modest, but uh, looked pretty crisp, 14-9 uh, lead. The Lumberjacks uh, took a 23-22 lead and then stormed out on a 15-0 run, and or excuse me, a 13-0 run, and uh, that pretty much has been the difference uh, thus far as we take a look. At the individual numbers, uh, we'll start with the team numbers. First for Stephen F. Austin, they shot 15 of 30 from the field, 4 of 10 from the three-point line, 8 of 14 from the free throw line. That seems to be a theme for Southeastern opponents, being able to get to the line like we all can get to our own restrooms, but that's a whole other story. Uh, the Lumberjacks out rebounding Southeastern 21 to 14. Uh, Rody Ware with 13 points, David Calcleries with 10. Kayvon Harris with seven points, uh, Cameron Johnson with six, and just seven turnovers for the Lumberjacks. For Southeastern, uh, they kind of spread it around with five points each for Brandon Gonzalez and Laquan Butler, four for Ty Brewer, three points for Isaiah Kirby and Nick Caldwell, and two for Pop Job Lions shooting just nine of 26 from the field, four of 13 from the three-point line, four of four at the free throw line. 11 turnovers, however, for the Lions, so obviously going to have to cut down on that. Uh, 16 points off turnovers for Stephen F. Austin, and uh, consequently, that's the deficit for the Lions, 42 to 26. But, uh, you know, it's still just that quote-unquote growth process that this team continues to go through. Uh, came out, looked pretty strong, and they just have not – really been able to avoid the four and five minute stretches where things kind of fall apart and I don't think that's uh, you know necessarily uh, I, mean, I think that's what that comes with youth I mean it's, it's just not easy to uh, you know it's, it's not easy unfortunately for the Lions to be able to uh, you know, weather those types of storms when you have a lot of uh, youth. So, uh, you know, tough break thus far. I think it's only a matter of time, though. This team is going to battle, and this is going to be a competitive finish to this game. But I think this is all, uh, you know, dude, I, I mean, <laughs> I think you're going to see a fantastic finish, and I think you're going to see a lot of good from uh, the Lions as uh, we – continue to battle and uh, try to get back in this ball game. So, Lions trailing 42 to 26 at the half. We'll take a two minute break and come back. This is Southeastern Men's Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. Coverage of Lion Athletics on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network is brought to you by Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction. John and Georgian Petit, along with all of the employees of Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction, are proud supporters of Lion Athletics and wish each team the very best of luck this season. Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction is open to licensed dealers only and is located at 18310 Woodscale Road in Hammond. Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction is on the web at www.lafca.com.
safety. To increase public safety, Southeastern Athletics has instituted a clearback policy for all ticketed athletic events. The policy mirrors the safety precautions taken upon entrance to professional and collegiate sporting venues throughout the country. More information about the new Lion Clear policy is available at lionsports.net slash clear. How about the Lions Game Day Experience app? Enjoy digital access to Southeastern player bio, schedules, live scoring updates, social media feeds, and much more. The new mobile app, which provides for custom notifications and support for audio and video broadcasts, is available for download in the App Store and Google Play. A download link is also available at lionsports.net slash app. Inside Southeastern Basketball premieres this Monday, beginning January the 6th. Inside Southeastern Basketball with David Keeper is live from Rainbow Daiquiri's at 14384 West Thomas Street. Talk college hoops with Coach David Keeper and host Alan Waddell as they cover the finer points of today's game and preview the upcoming games. If you can't join the crowd, you can submit a question at linesports.net for the quote Ask the Coach segment. Inside Southeastern Basketball with David Keeper airs each Monday during the Southland Conference schedule on the Southeastern Sports Network. So, again, if you are just joining us, the Lumberjacks of Stephen F. Boston with a 42-26 to lead over Southeastern. And, again, you got to give credit. This is the team that has really, for the, you know, for the most part, dominated the conference uh, from over uh, the last decade uh, outside of last year. So, uh, you know, a little bit of a down season. Uh Obviously, what they did on uh, November 26th at Duke let everybody in this conference know that this was not the same team from a year ago. So, uh, And then, of course, uh, Kayvon Harris, uh, for those of you that have been following uh, this conference, uh, the guy, I mean, the guy is uh, uh, easily a first-team All-Southland uh, player and uh, going to be a player of the year candidate. But it's not necessarily been him tonight that has been the thorn for the Lions. Don't get me wrong, he's still made his plays and, uh, you know, been a thorn as far as uh, the rebounds getting in there and uh, helping uh, the Lumberjacks get second chance opportunities. But uh, Rody Ware has hit jumper after jumper after jumper after jumper and just looks pure uh, out there. Six out of seven from the field with a handful of rebounds and uh, leading all scores with 13 points. The uh, Jacks with six assists on 15 field goals. So that just tells you that it's really good one-on-one uh, -on -one basketball for the most part. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're still making the extra pass, but for the most part, it's just been uh, them able to make some good one-on-one -on -one moves and uh, able to capitalize on the offensive end. But uh, defensively, they've obviously done a heck of a job. Now, the question is, if your coach David Keeper in Southeastern, how, uh, what do you do about it? And how do you get back in the ball game? I think it's going to start on the defensive end. I think they're going to they're going to have to do exactly what the Lumberjacks did uh, in the first half. Uh, Stephen F. Austin scoring 16 points off of Southeastern turnovers. That's going to be a good way for the Lions to get back in this game. Get some easy buckets on turnovers, easy layups in transition, and not have to play in the half court. Not have to rely on you know 15, 18 foot jumpers. And don't get me wrong, I thought the Lions had some good looks for the most part in the first half. But, uh, you know, obviously steals and layups are a heck of a lot easier and a lot, uh, you know, more productive. And uh, I think that's going to be the recipe for the Lions to get back into this ball game, to use the defense that we've seen that this team is capable of and not necessarily try to get into a shootout uh, with a team in Stephen F. Austin that leads the conference in scoring at 83.9 a game. So, Obviously, they can put the ball in the basket. That's not going to be how the Lions win this game. They're going to have to find a way to slow this thing down and grind it out to, uh, if they're going to find a way to come back and win this one. And, uh, you know, if it, I mean, if, it, if it's all on, uh, you know, second chance points, turnovers, whatever it is, I think that's going to be a uh, way to get back in this ball game and try to put some pressure on a, a, a very seasoned team that uh, obviously has been – everywhere and has proven that they can play in the most hostile environments uh, in the entire country. Obviously, uh, Cameron Indoor, probably at, at, at least a top five hardest places to play in the country, maybe even better than that. So uh, we'll see if the Lions uh, have a comeback in them. We've got a little over two minutes to go till we start the second half. It's a 42-26 Lumberjacks lead here at halftime. This is Southeastern men's basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. You're listening to Southeastern Lion Athletics right here on 90.9.
Mm -hmm. Fuck out. One was Boosters because I'm mad uh, because I mispronounced commas. Either directly and or indirectly. And boosters may not provide any the benefits to athletes, the needs of the current or and perspective, beer. or their He's friends or family. Game. Please remember that booster conduct is considered fan. representation Not of com, Southeastern uh, Louisiana something. University, and any rule yeah. violation committed by a booster could result in sanctions against I'm call line athletics, out. including our student athletes, coaches, and prospects. For more information regarding booster and other NCAA rules, visit the Lion Athletics Compliance page located at lionsports.net. You can contact the compliance office at area code 985-549-2227 or email at lionscompliance at southeastern.edu. Just about ready to start the second half, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, boy, social media is popping today. As uh, Stephen F. Austin will start. The second half of the basketball as Como, Como has it working left to right. You got me there, Red. They'll get this one down low to Harris. Harris immediately turns around and gets this one to go, and it's an 18-point game, 44-26. to 26. Pass goes into the front court to Julian. I like the gentleman that said a thesaurus and a beer. Sir, if you'll bring it to me personally, I'll, de I'll definitely take you up on that. Julian working near side wing. Dribbles to the top of the key. Pass comes back near side, and it goes out of bounds. Rody uh, Ware, nice job defensively. And Southeastern will keep the basketball. Julian gets it in bounds to Butler. Butler dribbles to the far side, has it knocked away, and it's stolen. Nice play again defensively by the Lumberjacks. Into the front court, it goes over to Ware. Ware. Dribbles into the little lane, lane, and this one is put up. This one is no good. Rebound cleared by Southeastern, and pop job. So, foul's going to go against number 12, Charlie Daniels. And the Lions will get it back. Julian walks it into the front court. Lions a little stagnant here to start the second half. Just a little bit more ball movement needed, and they throw this one away. It's a turnover right into the hands of Daniels. Daniels up ahead to Harris. Harris shot put up. No good. Offensive foul. Let's go the other way. Eighteen point two going the ball game. It's an 18-point Lumberjacks lead. Julian into the front court, dribbles it to the top of the key. Julian looking to find somewhere to go with a good defense, though, by Bain, and then the reach-in foul call. Boy, Stephen F. Austin is clamped down on the defensive end here in this one. Julian inbound wide open. It's hope, uh, for Byron Smith. He drills it. Byron Smith knocks down the three. It's a 44-29 lead. Lions just got to focus on getting stops on their end. Camo gives it top of the key to Bain. Far side to Harris. Foul away from the ball. We got a three-second. Let's go the other way. Never mind. 44-29 our score. Lions trying to inch their way back into this one. Julian lobs it back door to Brewer, loses it. Oh, out of bounds. Good idea, but Brewer can't handle it. And the Lions turn it back over it's a, as it's a 15-point deficit for Southeastern. And this one into the front court. Knocked away by Pop Chop. Stolen. Here come the Lions. Brewer kicks it outside. Smith for three. This one's good. And Byron Smith knocks down a couple of threes, and it's back to 12 as the Lions not going to go away so fast as it's a 12-point game and looking to get their way back into this one. It's been a good one 
so far at least for Stephen F. Austin, especially on the defensive end, but I've got a feeling the Lions are definitely uh, going to uh, have something to say about this one before we're all said and done. 17.58 left in the game. A timeout call will stay right with it as we'll take a quick peek at a couple of the readers yet again. Uh, Lions game day experience app. Enjoy digital access to Southeastern player bio, schedules, live scoring updates, social media feeds, and much more. The new mobile app, which provides for custom notifications and support for audio and video broadcasts, is available for download in the App Store and Google Play. A download link is also available at lionsports.net slash app. Inside Southeastern basketball airs each Monday night at 7, beginning this Monday. Inside Southeastern basketball, David Kiefer from Rainbow Daiquiri's at 14384 West Thomas Street. Talk college hoops with Coach Keeper and host Alan Waddell as they cover the finer points of tonight's game to preview the upcoming games. If you can't join the crowd, you can submit a question at lionsports.net or the quote, ask the coach segment. Inside Southeastern basketball, David Kiefer every Monday night during the Southland Conference schedule. So we're back to action, 17.58 to go. Lumberjacks 44, Southeastern 32 as... The Lions try to battle their way back into this one. Full court pressure as this one comes in bounds to Como. Como guarded closely by Smith. Como to the far side wing. Pass comes near side to Harris. Harris to the free throw line, and they're going to call a reach in foul against Laquan Butler. So Harris will inbound on the near sideline. It comes into Como. Como to Harris. Harris back to Bain. Bain out to Ware. Ware to Harris. Harris drives in. Stripped and stolen by the Lions, and they have numbers. Into the front court at Smith. Smith drives hard to the basket. Lay it put up and good. Coach David Kiefer warning a foul call. Doesn't get it. That's eight straight points for the freshman. Smith, and it's down to 10, 44-34. Como working far side wing, looking down low, though gets it into the corner of the where. Now gets it down low to Daniels, back to where. The long jumper, that's no good. Rebound tipped and fought for. This one will go to Pop Jop, and the Lions clear it. Jop, and the Lions trying to get this down to single digits as it's Julian. Top of the key to Jop. Jop almost loses it, but then comes near side with it to Brewer. Brewer backs down. Looking to go somewhere with it. Then goes to Butler. Butler back to Brewer. Brewer takes the jumper from the near side. That's off the front iron. No good. Rebound knocked away. And nope, going to be a reach-in foul called against Byron Smith. So 44-34 our scores. The Lions try to grind their way back into this one. Bain will inbound on the far sideline. And... The infamous now John Como dribbles it into the front court near side. Offensive foul. What a play by Byron Smith. So the Lions will get it right back. Smith, front court. Dribbles near side. Back up top to Pop Chop with 16.32 to go. Chop to the near side, drives baseline, goes up strong with it, and offensive foul. Looked like a pretty good uh, defensive play by John Como, and he draws the charge. 16.26 left in the game. Saving the Boston 44, Southeastern 34. Como into the front court. Guarded closely by Smith and dribbles to the baseline. Gets it to Bain at the free throw line. Well, the shot is put up no good. Rebound tipped up. It is cleared by Ty Brewer. Brewer gets it into the front court to Julian. Julian to Butler. Butler fakes the three, then dribbles into the lane. Little floater from about 10 feet. Gets it to go. It's an eight-point game. Lions battling back. 44-36. Into the front court. Knocked away from behind by Smith in the reach-in foul. What? Foul called. 
Foul called against Byron Smith. Coach Kiefer hates the call, so does Byron Smith. That takes us to the under 16 media timeout. We'll take a break. Lions inching their way back in this one as they trail 44-36. This is Southeastern Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. Getting back into this ball game after eight straight points from freshman Byron Smith. It's a 44 to 36 game. Stephen F. Austin looking for their 12th victory of the season. 12 and two over, or 11 and two overall, two and zero in the Southland. So Stephen F. Austin will take it out of their own basket with Calcaris. Get to the end to Johnson. Johnson goes back up top to Harris. Harris gets it far side to Calcaris. I'm sure I'm getting that wrong. Let me hear about it on Twitter, SFA fans. Top of the key to Harris. Harris cut off nicely. Pass comes near side to Johnson. Johnson drives into the lane. Little floater, no good. Tipped up and fought for. This one is going to be an offensive rebound. Johnson, he goes up strong with it and gets it to go. 44, 46, 36. Back the other way, it's Julian. Julian into the lane. Little float. Kicks it near side to Butler. Butler down low to Jop. Jop skips it back near side to Julian. Extra pass left wide open. Kirby for three. Drills it. Forty-six thirty-nine, Southeastern trailing as they continue to chip away at this one as Ware brings it into the front court. Ware guarded by Kirby. Kirby. Ware gets it far side to Calcaris. Cut off nicely by Pop Jop. And then Brewer will pick him up. Calcaris comes up to, to Harris. Harris drives hard into the lane. Cut off by Kirby. Pass near side to three-pointer from the corner. That's good. Big shot by where and it's back to 10. Kirby fakes the three, then skips it far side to Butler. 49-39, Southeastern trailing. Butler, oh, nice hesitation. A little floater from about 10. Gets it to go. What a pretty move by the sophomore. 49-41 in favor of the Jacks. Inbounds pass comes to Ware. Ware guarded closely by Brewer, and now he'll walk it into the front court. Better the ball game here as we wind down on this one. 14 minutes to go. Where? Top of the key. Drives hard right side. Shot put up. No good, but a foul going to be called. Job goes straight up with it. Thought it looked like pretty good defense from here. And that'll put Ware at the line. So where, with exactly 14 minutes to go. First free throw is good as Gonzalez and Starwood check back in. Pop Jop will take a seat along with Vaughn Julian. Stephen F. Austin 50, Southeastern 41, 14 minutes to go. Second free throw where, and he just continues to shoot the lights out of the basketball here this evening. Whew. Seven of 10 from the field, two of three from the three-point line, a couple of free throws. 
51-41. Top of the key, Kirby. Kirby drives hard right side. Puts this one off the glass and good. Pretty move by the freshman. And it's back to eight. 51-43. Pressure in the backcourt by Southeastern. Inbounds comes to Ware. Ware guarded by Butler. Butler will dribble it into the front court between the circles. Ware gives it back over to Harris. Harris dribbles in the lane. Gets it outside to Johnson for three. No, he fakes the three, then drives in. Gets a flow to the goal. Pretty move by Cameron Johnson. Fake the three and such a pretty shot fake. I thought the ball was already in the air. Well done by Johnson. 53-43, lead back to 10. Butler working near side, drives in and kicks it outside to Gonzalez. Gonzalez kills his dribble. At, bounces it uh, to Starwood. Starwood to Butler. Butler has his shot blocked from behind. What a play by Charlie Daniels. Daniels up ahead to Johnson, lays it up and in. Back to 12, 55-43. It's a seasoned uh, battle-tested Stephen F. Austin team. Uh, it looks like a bunch of 30-year-olds on the floor, and they uh, the experience is showing. Wild pass back door to Brewer. Brewer on the block. Far side to Gonzalez for three. That's no good. Rebound tipped, and no, it goes into the hands of Cameron Johnson. And Johnson will push it into the front court. As this one winds down on 12 and a half left, Johnson working near side, guarded by Brewer. This one to the free throw line to Harris. Harris drives right side layup, put up no good, but a foul called against Isaiah Kirby, and it seemed uh, kind of a late whistle, but nonetheless, to the free throw line, they'll go. First free throw is up and it's good. Here's second free throw, that one is good. It's back to 14. Fifty-seven, forty-three, twelve, twenty to go. Byron Smith working far side. Dribbles to the far side and lays this one up off the glass. No good. It tipped away, but it's Starwood able to run it down. Then it's stolen away by Harris. What a play by Kayvon Harris. He'll lay, uh, slam it home on the other end and hangs on the rim for good measure. 59-43, so just like that, an eight-point game back to an 18, or a 16-point lead. 59-43, our score. Kirby dribbles far side. Takes a three from the near side wing and drills it. So the Lions not ready to go away yet. Next dead ball take us to the under uh, 12 media timeout, 59-46. Over to Harris. Harris to Johnson. Johnson dribbles in. Shot put up off the glass and good. Cameron Johnson yet again with a beautiful move. And the Jacks just continue to make play after play after play. So... Smith working far side wing. Skips it far side. This one over to Gonzalez for three. That's no good. Rebound tipped up. This one goes to Caldwell. Layup put up no good. And it goes out of bounds off of the Jacks. 10.36 to go in the game. That takes us to the media timeout. Lions trailing big here. 61-46 with 10 and a half. Remaining, we're back in a moment. This is Southeastern Men's Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network.
Lions you know, playing hard, just uh, not executing particularly well on the offensive end as they're shooting 17 of 39, while the Lumberjacks 22 of 41, 5 of 12 from the three-point line and uh, 12 of 18 from the free throw line, so getting it done there. And uh, it's a it's an unbelievably experienced basketball team that shows exactly how and why they were able to go into the most difficult atmosphere in all of college basketball and win uh, back on November 26 when they defeated Duke 85-83 in overtime. And the inbounds pass to Smith, but a foul away from the ball is going to be called against number 11. Otis Walker. And the Lions will take it out again with Kirby. Kirby comes in bounds to Starwood. Little baby hook from five feet away, or maybe even closer, goes. And it's a 13-point deficit, 61-48, as Johnson races into the front court to the near side wing. And that one off the foot of Johnson, and it's a backcourt violation. Then 20 to go, Southeastern trying to get back in this one. It's a Baker's Dozen deficit, 61-48. Lions looking to snap the five-game losing streak. Oh, nice crossover dribble. Kirby goes right side and puts a shot up, and then what do we have? A foul away from the basketball. This is going to go against number 11, Otis Walker. So, inbounds pass comes to Kirby. Kirby drives into the lane, crossover dribble. Nice job. Boy, Kirby handling the basketball well, but again, good defense. Tipped away, but into the hands of Smith. Smith fires a three and drills it from the near side wing. 61-41, pressure in the backcourt. Solomon gets it to Ware. Ware has it near side wing. Lions look like they switched to the zone. Ware dribbles into the lane. Shot put up. Good defense by Starwood. Loose ball. Tipped up far for it. Starwood that clears it. And we're going to get a foul called against Stephen F. Austin and Brody Ware. So 61-51 Southeastern trailing. And they have the basketball, though. That'll put them in the bonus the rest of the way. Both teams in the bonus actually from here on out. 9.37 to go in the game. Free throw is up and good. Second free throw is nothing but net. Sixty-one fifty-three. After Starwood drills them both, nine thirty-seven to go in the game. Pressure in the back court. Calcarees. Good defense as Smith and Kirby come, but the pressure is broken. Harris into the front court. Now we're going to get a foul call against Starwood. So that puts the Lumberjacks at the free throw line for the one and one as Harris steps up. Boy, this young man is so smooth on the basketball court. The first free throw is good. I mean, even on a night where it, it, it's not necessarily, you know, a career night for me, just kind of quietly but efficiently, you know, 14 points. Or let me, yeah, 14 points on uh, 8 of 10 from the free throw line, 3 of 7 shooting. It just, that's uh, 
That's what uh, first team all conference players do. Three pointer from the far side. Caldwell, this is off the front iron, no good. Rebound cleared by Daniels. This one to Como. Como into the front court. Dribbles to the near side wing. Can't find anywhere to go with it. This one in to Johnson. Johnson down low to Kirby. Kirby can't find anybody. Then goes back out to Daniels. He walked. Let's go the other way. 63-53 our score. 8.56 to go in the game. The Lions not done here by a long shot. Just a quick little burst here, and they could be right back in this game. As Nathan Bain will check back in. So, pressure in the back court, but Julian will walk it into the front court. Julian comes back near side to Smith. Smith to Brewer. Brewer backing down, had to knock away and stolen. What a play by Ware again. Ware into the front court to Johnson. Johnson drives baseline and slams it down. What a play by Cameron Johnson. Julian dribbles baseline himself, but he's cut off. Nowhere to go with it. And now we're going to get a reach in foul called against the Lumberjacks. With 8.19 to go, Bain, whistle for it. And that'll put Vaughn Julian at the line to shoot the one and one bonus. 8.19 left. 65-53 in favor of the Lumberjacks. Part of the one and one is nothing but net for the senior. Second free throw. Technical foul. Calls. Oh, let's see. Oh, technical foul called against Stephen F. Austin's Charlie Daniels. Not sure what happened there. Maybe looked like a little extra chatter with Daniels and uh, Smith, maybe. I don't know. So, let's see if they're going to put it at the free throw line. It'll be Quan Butler who checks in, and that's a pretty good move by David Kiefer. Sixty-five, fifty-four. Butler at the line to shoot a couple of free throws. First free throw is up and no good. So obviously a lot of passion in this game. The second free throw is no good. Coach Kyle Keller not happy with that particular call. This has always been an uh, intense rivalry. There's no question about it. 65-55 as Butler knocks down one of two. And then Julian now to shoot his second free throw. I'm not really sure uh, what happened there. I I I'm not personally a big fan of those types of calls. I mean, I didn't see uh, Charlie Daniels really doing anything demonstrative. It looked like he was just having a little chatter. With Smith, a little harmless trash talking that guys do, so I, I, I'll kind of defend Daniels on that one. Second free throw is good. It's a nine-point game from 65-56 as this one goes to Como at the half-court circle, guarded by Butler. Como gives this one near side over to Johnson. Johnson guarded by Julian. He drives right side. Lost it. Let's go the other way. Turnover. And Coach Keller looking uh, near side to the baseline official wanting a reach in foul, but that takes us to the under eight media timeout. 7.58 left in the game. Lions still right in this one, trailing by nine, 65-56. This is Southeastern Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. Headquartered in Hammond, Louisiana, first guarantee base.
five left in this one. Nine point game, 65-56. Stephen F. Austin with the lead. 11 and two, Stephen F. Austin and two and oh in the Southland. Lions still kind of trying to find their way here in the young season as this is just the second conference game of the year for Southeastern. Uh, the non-conference schedule is a tough one. Uh, the results not necessarily what they were looking for, but they played. But they competed extremely well and uh, doing the same thing here today against a, a veteran uh, Stephen F. Austin team that has got to be near the top right now as far as the favorites in this league. Julian dribbles to the far side. Southeastern trying to trim this now to a three-possession game. Or excuse me, a two possession. Skips it past uh, over to Kirby. Kirby drives in the lane. Cut off. Comes back near side. Julian. Top of the key. Brewer three. In and out. No good. Offensive rebound tipped up. No good by Starwood. And it's cleared by Harris as the Lumberjacks will bring it into the front court with seven and a half to go. Harris, far side, then gets it over to where. Layup put up. No good. Oh, and they're going to get a foul called against the Lions. Let's see. I think the foul is going to go against uh, number four, Max Starwood. And Ware will shoot a couple of free throws, and Brody Ware has been nothing less than spectacular. First free throw is good. Ware, the 6'3", junior from Morton, Mississippi. Seven of 11 from the field, uh, three of three from the free throw line. 19 points, make that 20. 67-56, front court. Kirby for three from the near side. This one's no good. Offensive rebound, Starwood. Starwood gets down to Kirby. Kirby, top of the key. Brewer, free throw line jumper, and this one's good. Back to nine, 67-58, seven minutes exactly to go in the game as Como into the front court. Como working near side wing, guarded closely by Kirby. Como dribbles to the right side, then he'll back it out and give it to Bain. Far side wing over to Ware. Ware guarded by Smith. Lines trying to come back and steal a victory over a fabulous basketball team no matter what. Pass goes top of the key, Bain, the three. This one off the iron, no good. Rebound tipped up, fought for. This one knocked out of bounds. Who's it going out of? It looked like. Looked like it was knocked out off of, okay, they're going to say Kirby. So, six and a half to go as Butler will check in for Kirby. And comes in to Camo. Camo. Nice crossover. He goes to the basket, but it's knocked out of bounds by Starwood. It'll stay with the Jacks. Well, great play by Starwood, but the ball does stay with Stephen F. Austin with 6.21 left in the game. 67 58, Stephen F. Austin. Pass comes in bounds. This one to Harris. Harris looked like he stumbled momentarily, but able to finish, and it's back to 11. Terrific play by Harris, 69-58. Front court, Butler. Butler threw it away right into the hands of Johnson. Johnson races it into the front court. Numbers for Stephen F. Austin. Where? Out to Como. Como into the lane. Bounces it back near side to Harris. He'll drill the three from the curve. Take the three from the corner. Can't get it to go. Rebound cleared southeastern, and the pace of this one is picked up drastically. Back outside, this one goes. Brewer, top of the key, three. That one's off the iron, no good. Rebound, fought for, and it is torn away by Stephen F. Austin. Johnson, front court, outside to Como. Como drives baseline, takes the jumper from about 12, and it's good. 71-58. Into the front court, Butler goes hard to the basket. Had it tipped out of bounds, it'll stay with Southeastern with five and a half to go. Five twenty-two left in the game. Make that five thirty-two. Couple of substitutions as Kirby comes right back in. Smith out. Solomon in for Stephen F. Austin, along with I think. Uh, let's see. I think that was Calculus. I 
Julian gets it inbounds to Kirby. Five and a half to go. Pass down low to Jop. Jop puts this one up and gets it to go. Pretty move. Pop Jop. Pass comes inbounds. Back the other way. It's an 11-point game. 71-60. Calgary's into the front court. Lions trying to get a couple stops here, but every time they go on any time, anything that resembles a run, Stephen F. Austin right there to make a play on the other end. Backdoor pass. This one almost knocked away and stolen, but Solomon gets it back. Solomon back up top to Bain. He'll uh, go hard to the basket. Shot put up. No good, but a blocking foul called against the Lions. Jop looked like uh, it looked like Jop took that one right in the chest. Doesn't get the call. He's stunned. So am I. And it's an 11-point game as they go to the free throw line. Bain, free throw up, good. Second free throw, good. It's back to 13, 73 to 60 as Julian in the front court. Oh, good pass down low to Jop. Lay it put up, but he's fouled from behind by Solomon. Good play by Solomon to prevent the layup. Lions battling back valiantly here in the second half, but I mean, every time they start to, someone for the Lumberjacks makes a big shot to just kind of stop us dead in the tracks. Free throws up and no good for Jop. But that's, again, that's uh, that's what a veteran team does. That's what a team that was capable of going to Cameron Indoor and winning uh, does. So <laughs> And, yes, uh, fans, if you're just joining us, Cameron Indoor, uh, they, they didn't play somewhat at a neutral site. That was Duke that they beat there. This one into the front court, but it's stolen away, and the Lions get it back into the front court is Kirby. He didn't play UNC Wilmington. It was definitely Duke. Kirby, top of the key, fires the three. No good. Rebound cleared, and it's into the hands of Harris, and here come the Jacks. Quickly into the front court. This one is, uh, boy, I'll tell you, Harris just handles the ball so smoothly. Bain, top of the key, gives it far side to Harris. Harris over to Daniels. Daniels near side to Como. Como takes the jumper from the baseline. This one is no good as it rolls off the rim. And the Lions running out of time with four minutes and change to go. It's a 13-point game, but not out of it by any stretch. Good pass down low. Brewer slams it down. Nice bounce pass from Julian to Brewer. 73-62. Uh, Into the front court, Como. Lumberjacks trying to hang on here to the victory, but the Lions well, having something to say about that. Pass goes out to the far side corner. Bain drives baseline, drops it off down low. To Daniels, layup put up, no good. Rebound cleared away by the Lions and Kirby. Kirby to Julian. Julian into the front court. Drives down low. We're going to get a reach in foul, and that's going to put Julian at the free throw line. At the under four media timeout, the final media timeout. 345 left in the ball game. Stephen F. Austin 73, Southeastern 62. Do the Lions have a run left in them? We'll see. We're back in a moment. This is Southeastern basketball.
highlights on every game, updates on your favorite players, news on every team. Listen to the show for the smartest sports fan, the whole nine yards every Monday night from 7 to 8 p.m. on 90.9 FM KSLU. Lion up and frog on. Big Frog Custom T-Shirts and More is a collegiate is and a, Greek licensed distributor a of SLU branded T-Shirts and More. And as a sponsor of Southeastern Athletics, now That's offers right. the featured Coach Selfo design. Located right on Southwest this. Railroad Avenue, across from Hammond Square, Big Frog provides individually designed T-Shirts, on-site graphic designers, along with a selection of colors, fonts, and graphics, with project completion within 24 hours. Big Frog Custom T-Shirts and More. Oh. Proud supporters of Lion Athletics. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Vaughn Julia knocking down one of two free throws. Then he misses the second and gets his own rebound and lays it up. And it's a 73-65 game with three and a half to go. Coach David Kiefer trying to rally his troops as Como has it. Gives it to Ware. Ware to the top of the key. He'll hand it off to Bain. Bain dribbles it up top. Comes back near side with it over to Johnson. Johnson behind the back dribble, drives in, puts the floater up, and charge. See, I think that one maybe should have gone the uh, block, and the previous one job maybe should have gotten the charge because I think you got to let the player get a chance uh, to come down, and uh, that was not the case on that one. But uh, I guess if you're going to go with the quote-unquote makeup call, 73-65 our score. Stephen F. Austin with the lead. Lions with the basketball with three minutes and change to go. And this one not done by a long shot. Pass goes into the corner. Kirby for three. No good. Rebound tip. This one goes. What a play by Smith to keep it alive. Smith drops it down low. Job. Lay it. Put up. And good. And it's a six-point game. 73-67. Back the other way. Shot put up. And this one is no good. It's tipped up. No good. And this one is, oh, it's a loose ball, but it goes right to South East, or to Como. Boy, that's a tough break right there. The Lions just kind of got caught staring right there. And then it was Como coming up with a huge loose ball as he goes to the free throw line to shoot the double bonus. Both teams in the double bonus the rest of the way. Stephen F. Austin, 73, Southeastern, 67. A great comeback here in the second half by the Lions. Can they finish it? Combo's first free throw is nothing but net. Oh, boy, that could end up being a huge play in this game right now. Lions had a chance to go back the other way, and uh, now it's back to a three-possession lead for Stephen F. Austin as Combo's second free throw is up and this one rolls out and the Lions get it back trailing 74-67 2 minutes 34 seconds left the Southeastern trying to pull off the upset the Lions came in an 11 point underdog Julian working far side wing looking can't find where to go then goes down low with it to Brewer baseline jumper this one is good 5 point lead for Stephen F. Austin closest the Lions have been since 7 minutes left in the first half 74 69, 212 left in the game. Top of the key, it's Harris. Harris, probably the guy that the uh, that uh, Stephen F. Austin wants to have the ball, but this will go down low to Bain. Bain kicks this one down low. It's to Harris, left wide open for the dunk. Great pass on the interior by Bain. And now, what do we have? A timeout call by Stephen F. Austin with 155 left. 76-69, our score as the Lions continue to fight back in this one. Uh, let's see if they can complete the comeback, though. As uh, I mean, first half things obviously did not look particularly well. And now here we are with just two minutes and, or excuse me, well, one minute and 55 seconds to go. And Lion, the Lions very much uh, available to uh, steal this one and see if they can. So, been a tough non-conference stretch, but you can see that this team is slowly but surely getting better each and every second that they're on the floor. And uh, obviously the Lions want to be where Stephen F. Austin is right now. And I'm not talking about just necessarily in this game, but as a whole, uh, you know, obviously a program at 11-2, 2-0 in the Southland, a team that's done what they have historically in the conference. And... Uh, 
the Lions wanting to get to the point where they're consistently at that level. And uh, here's a great measuring stick tonight. Backdoor pass to Brewer. Lays this one up. No good. And no foul call. David Keeper can't believe it. Quickly into the front court. Pass goes to Como. Como shut off nicely by Julian. But right now, Stephen F. Austin, the clock is their friend. They should be in no rush whatsoever, and it doesn't look like they will be. Como, top of the key to Bain. Far side wing, this one will go over to uh, Johnson. Johnson to Harris with eight seconds to shoot. Harris guarded by Brewer. Harris drives right side, a little floater from 10, and that's good. Pretty move by Harris, and that might be the dagger. 78-69, Stephen F. Austin. A minute and 10 to go. Butler, far side over to Smith. Smith, step back jumper from about 18 feet. No good. Rebound cleared by Harris, and it's under a minute to go. And Harris gets it over to Como. Como races it in the front court, but a reach in foul going to be called before he could get there. And he goes to the line, and that looks like the Lions' comeback bid going to fall a little bit short as they just can't quite get to that extra level that they need to get to. Uh, we've seen, you know, same thing at the Vanderbilt, same thing against Ole Miss right there, but just couldn't quite make a play. And it looks like that's what's going to happen here today against Stephen F. Austin. Free throw up, in and out, no good for Como. So, second free throw for Como. Off the front iron, he misses them both. Oh, wow. Lane violation called against Pop Jop. Lane violation called, and there was not a single player for Stephen F. Austin even in on the offensive rebound attempt. Second free throw rolls in. So, it's back to 10, 79-69. Lions get this one to Julian. Julian into the front court. Lions need points in a hurry. Julian to the basket. Layup put up no good, but a foul called. And he'll go to the line. Much better effort here. Well, I mean, the effort's been fine the whole game, but uh, much better execution in the second half, I should say, for Southeastern. But a little bit, uh, looks like they're going to come a little bit short, unfortunately. First free throw is good. But, again, it's about the process. You're talking about a team that's got ten uh, freshmen and sophomores, seven freshmen, three sophomores to be exact, and uh, just one senior. Some of the growing pains were going to be there, and that's, you know, maybe what we're seeing, and not to say that this was so much painful because this was, a, you know, obviously one of the better teams in the conference coming in here. Lions knew they were going to have their hands full, and I think uh, considering uh, all things competed very well here today, but uh, barring, you know, not to say that everything, it's over per se, but, uh, you know, obviously it's going to take a lot of things uh to happen in their favor if they're going to overcome an eight-point deficit with 40 seconds and almost a turnover. That would have been certainly one of the ways to start to do it. Johnson skips it far side over to Harris. 30 seconds to go, and they reach in foul, and Harris will go to the line. So, Kayvon Harris at the free throw line. Harris, 8 of 10 from the charity stripe. Harris, first free throw up. This one is nothing but that. Double-double for Harris, 20 points, 10 rebounds, or 21 points and 10 rebounds. Second free throw in and out, no good. Rebound cleared, and it's a nine-point game. Kirby, far side, cut off. Top of the key to Brewer. Brewer will fire the three. Way up top, no good. Rebound cleared. And that should just about do it as Stephen F. Austin's Cameron Johnson clears it. So Johnson will go to the free throw line. And the 
The Lions will look to continue to build and move in the right direction Saturday when they take on Texas A&M Corpus Christi. But Stephen F. Austin going to pick up the victory here and improve the 12 and 2 overall, 3 and 0 in the Southland. And second free throw is good, and it's back to 11. So, so, so veteran team. Uh, Come out, you know, five, six seniors, and uh, this one, three-pointer far side. Butler, that one is no good. Rebound cleared. Lions won't foul. That'll do it as Harris will get it up ahead into the front court as Nathan Bain will hold on to it, and that'll do it as the Stephen F. Austin wins this one, 82 to 71. So pretty good effort by the Lions in the second half, but unable to come away with the victory as the Lumberjacks pick up the victory and uh, improve to 3-0 and in the Southland. We'll take a two-minute break. We'll come back and uh, talk a little bit more about this one. We'll get some final box scores and much more. This is Southeastern Men's Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. Support for coverage of Lion Athletics is provided in part by The Daily Star. Serving Hammond and the surrounding communities for 60 years, the Daily Star remains focused on local news, community information, and area events. Providing knowledge of news while helping the community grow, the Daily Star also offers advertising and home deliveries. For more information, the Daily Star is available by phone at area code 985-254-7827 or online at HammondStar.com. The Creeks Apartments are proud supporters of Southeastern Athletics. Located within one mile of the university, the Creeks offers two and three bedroom apartments and facility features include a community pool, fitness center, and media room, plus indoor and outdoor lounges for residents. Policing office is available from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday at 985-345-8966. The Creeks Apartments, proudly supporting your Southeastern Lions and the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. to 71 as we're joined by assistant coach for the Lions, Patrick Schulte. And, you know, Patrick, I think you can take a lot of positives from this one. I mean, I, I know that uh, the coaching staff, uh, yourself, Coach Kiefer, you're all ready to get over the proverbial hump and start to win some of these games. But the process that you guys have talked about, I mean, it, it's getting there. I, I know it's probably a little difficult sometimes as a coach and whatnot, but I mean, is it as clear to you as it seems to me that we are getting there? It's just, it, 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 it's taking a lot of time. I liked how we rebounded, um, not rebounded physically, but rebounded back from that first half to start the second half. Our first four minutes were really good. Uh, we jumped out, we beat them 10-2 to in that first four minutes and forced five turnovers. Mm -hmm. uh, we just dug ourselves a little bit too big of a hole in the first half with a couple careless turnovers and bad shots, but second half we were really pleased with how we how we fought back uh, after taking it in the chin a little bit in the first half yeah no question i mean a, a, another uh, spectacular performance by byron smith with uh, 15 points and got really hot in the second half uh, you know it just seems like that's what the you know the young man on this team that's uh, progressing about as fast as anybody and uh you know 
just tell me a little bit about what you've seen from him throughout the first, you know, and his progression through the first 11, 12 games. It's, it's no surprise the progression Byron has made because he's in the gym every single day. He's always asking coaches to get in extra work. He's always up watching film with us. Uh, he does everything right. He's a, he's a dream to coach. Um, I would take 13 Byron Smiths every day of the week. Uh, it's, it's no surprise why he's having the, the instant success he is because he does everything right off the court. He takes care of all of his business. Um, so it's no surprise to us he puts in the work, and, and you can see that it's, it's paying off for him. Yeah, no question. You know, Coach, if there's one area I guess you would point to, I mean, that it, in, a, in these extremely tight games, you know, this one, of course, uh, right there uh, late, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, Tulsa, Austin P. You look at all those games, and, you know, they were certainly, you know, games that some would argue well, we probably were not, on, on paper you'd think we're going to lose 20 points, but we had a chance to win all six of those games. What area do you point to to say, okay, that costs us a game? I mean, I know each one of them different, but – Collectively, what do you see as the thing that's holding us back from getting to that next level with the victories? Just a little bit of a little bit of immaturity, just being able to play a full 40 minutes. I know we have talked about it before. We're, we'll be really good for 32 or 34 or 36 minutes, but those other four, six, eight minutes get us, and it's just getting these guys to continually progress and and realize it's a 40-minute game, and they will as they as they keep maturing and and we keep working with them. But really, it's just a little bit of uh, immaturity not being able to put together a full 40 minutes yet. Real quick, uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi Thursday. That's a quick turnaround. Going to jump on the plane at 7 o'clock or 9 o'clock tomorrow morning mm-hmm. and uh, head to Houston, then uh, Corpus Christi. Have you gotten much of a chance to look at them, Coach, or not? To, I mean, I know it's a quick turnaround. but Yeah, I have. Uh, it's actually my scout, so I have been working on them. They are a really talented team. Offensively, they shoot a lot of threes. They're going to try to spread the floor, drive it, kick to a shooter. I said a lot of high open post ball screens. Mm-hmm. Um, very good team, very well coached. So it'll be a, another good challenge for us. No question. Well, listen, man, I appreciate your time. Uh, Good luck the rest of the way. For what it's worth, man, I, I feel like we're getting close. I mean, I, you know, it's just a matter of time, I think, before this team hits that stride where they win nine out of ten games. So, uh, wishing you the best of luck, man. Let's go get one Saturday. Thanks, man. Ladies and gentlemen, assistant coach for the Southeastern men's basketball team, Patrick Shoulder. Take a quick break, come back, and give you the final box score. So-
Welcome back to the University Center, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, Southeastern Falls 70 to 82 to 71 to Stephen F. Austin. An entertaining game, a uh, passionate game, as always, between the Jacks and the Lions. It's a, a rivalry that is getting more intense as the years go by, uh, but uh, the Jacks uh, get the victory here again, and this is uh, the third straight win they've gotten over. The Lions, as we take a look at the final numbers, uh, uh, Jack shoot uh, 27 out of 53 from the field for 51%, 5 of 14 from the three-point line, 23 of 32 from the free throw line. They out-rebound the Lions 38 to 27. Uh, Kevon Harris with 21 points on 6 of 11 shooting, 9 of 12 from the free throw line. Roddy uh, Ware with 20 points, 18 points for Cameron Johnson, and 10 for David Calcarees. Uh 18 turnovers for the Lumberjacks, so the Lions defense really stepping it up in the second half, but uh, just not quite able to uh, finish the job. So uh, Southeastern, 25 of 57 from the field, 9 of 28 from the three-point line, 12 of 16 from the free throw line, 27 rebounds. They got four in double figures led by Byron Smith with 15, 11 points for Isaiah Kirby and 10 each for Tyron Brewer and Laquan Butler. 19 turnovers for the Lions on uh, 14 assists. Just a big hole in the first half, too much to overcome. And uh, points in the paint were uh, tough too as the the Lions uh, just unable to, you know, get over the hump. 30 points in the paint, 14 for Southeastern, and uh, the Lions fall to 3-10 and 10 overall and 0-2 uh, in the Southland. But that will wrap things up for us, ladies and gentlemen. An entertaining broadcast. Uh, had uh, fun, uh, you know, with uh, the social media today. Hope everybody, though, that is, seriously did enjoy the broadcast. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of fans tuned in from all over the area, both Southeastern and and Stephen F. Austin fans, uh, it was a well-played game. I thought it was a very clean game, too. I didn't see any hard fouls or cheap shots. So uh, a, definitely a positive that came from the day. Uh, obviously, us Lion fans would certainly have liked to have seen the outcome uh, be a little bit different. But nonetheless, the Lumberjacks, uh, Coach uh, Kyle Keller, just uh, a heck of a job. And this is why they're in the position they are. You're not, you don't start off with season 12 until you don't go to a place like Cameron Indoor Stadium. Uh, and win by accident. So uh, they're going to be a force. They're going to be tough for anybody to beat in the Southland this year. But there's a lot of uh, basketball still left to be played, obviously. But uh, that'll do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. want to give a shout-out uh, to our producer back at the KSLU studios, uh, Rasha Haynes. I'm Chris Saleem reminding you once again, our final score, Stephen F. Austin, 82 Southeastern 71. We'll see you the Thursday, or excuse me, Saturday afternoon at 3.30 from Texas A&M Corpus Christi as the Lions take on the Islanders. Thanks again for watching and listening to Southeastern Men's Basketball. We say good night from the University Center in Hammond, America.